Okay, number five is actually my favorite tip of all time because it will give you the best results out of any any hair growth tip out there. Hey love, it's Angelica aka Angie B and today I am sharing some hair growth tips you absolutely need, especially because they are usually overlooked. My hair is straightened currently. This is what my hair is looking like. It has grown a lot. I haven't cut up my split ends yet, so do not roast me. My sister hasn't come over yet, so I need help. The first hair growth tip that you absolutely need that is highly overlooked is cutting, not your split ends, chipped nails, okay? If your nails are chipped, if you have any little crack in your nails, if just the edge of your nail is kind of like cracked, you need to cut your nails if you want to protect your hair or if you have like nail supplies at home where you can do like the tissue hack. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but you can mend your nail with like tissue paper and nail varnish and like a file and basically it fixes your nail and you can get rid of any kind of sharp-ish edges or anything like that. So the reason why I want to do that is because you might not feel it, but while you're doing your hair, like moisturizing it or just like moving your hair, like doing that or whatever, Little pieces of hair can get caught in your nails and I actually just cut some nails. I am just, I don't want to let go of my nails because I've really grown them out, but I'm going to cut them like after this video. But if you can see, these two nails were snagged, this one and this one, and so I cut them. But these ones are still the regular length. They don't look too strange. Um, but as you can see, if you have a little cut like in the corner somewhere here, or if your nails are just extremely sharp, either fake nails or you have just filed your nails and they are extremely sharp, those may not necessarily snag your hair and you might not feel it, but they will cause breakage because eventually as you run your fingers through your hair a couple times, it's gonna cause some damage, it's gonna cause some fraying and can even cause split ends. So please take a look at that. You don't have to do everything for your hair but just take it into consideration. The next thing is don't use or try as much as you can to avoid rubber bands in your hair. It doesn't matter what race you are, what kind of hair you have, rubber bands can actually cause a lot of breakage because just because of the nature of the, I don't wanna say fabric, the material, rubber, it can kind of make hair just wrap around it, even if your hair is in a straightened, whether your hair is straight or whether it's curly. And this may be when doing braids, you know, if you tie bands on it or if you do certain hairstyles, like, you know, there's lots of very like fancy hairstyles now where you can like clip your like braid and like put elastics all over your hair, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. There's certain hairstyles like that. And those hair bands can cause a lot of tangling, a lot of breakage, a lot of excess shedding, like you were actually pulling the hair out from the roots. Just because of how the bands are, they kind of just twist in a certain way that makes hair wrap around them. I've seen a lot of people putting like oil on the bands. I guess it adds a little bit more slip and helps it not make the hair wrap around. But I feel like if you're doing that maybe for a couple hours, possibly it could help. But if you're doing it for a prolonged amount of time, eventually the oil is all gonna slip off and you're still going to remain with the same issue. And sometimes rubber can actually disintegrate if you put more oil on it. So it may not be the best option to get that disintegrating chemicals in your hair. But if you must use them, when taking them out, do not use the burning one. I don't know how this became a trend, but a lot of people just get like a hot flat iron or a hot curling one, and they just put it on the band and the band kind of burns and it snaps open. And sure, that is a quick way. You won't have to deal with like rolling it out and getting your hair twisted in. But eventually those little bits of rubber are going to burn onto your hair, then it's going to burn your hair and again, eventually. This is one of those things where you do it a couple of times and you're like, hmm. I don't know why, why I didn't think of this before. It is quick, I get no breakage, everything is fine. But let's say you do this a couple times a week or a couple times a month for months or a year. Possibly at the end of the year, you might be like, I've been protective styling, I've been doing really good things, but all of a sudden I feel like I'm just experiencing a whole lot of breakage like from nowhere because usually when you do tiny 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 things they don't really add up it's like deep conditioning your hair if you deep condition your hair once and then you forget about it you do it like once every four months you won't really notice anything but then if you do it every single week or every two weeks at least for like six months it's gonna feel like one day your hair just became amazing overnight, but it's actually a buildup of doing the same thing over and over again. So this can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. So avoid rubber bands. That's what I'm trying to say. 
The third tip is extremely underrated in my own opinion, and this is use targeted products. And when I say targeted, I don't mean targeting necessarily your hair porosity or your hair texture or your hair type. Meaning I'm not saying if you are black with type four hair like me, you don't have to go to the aisle and say, this is for curly type four hair. That's not necessarily what I mean. I mean, specifically, what is your issue right now? Are you experiencing dryness? For example, I naturally have dry hair. I naturally have dry skin, okay? I'm just, if it comes to hair or skin, maybe even nails, I'm on the drier side, okay? So when I'm looking for a product, I'm always gravitating towards something that says, moisturizing okay now you might have the same porosity as me the same hair texture the same thickness even the same length <laughs> but instead of really dry hair you may have oily hair or if you have hair that feels like a little mushy you know it feels like it's not necessarily damaged but it just feels like way too soft and a little mushy. Your hair is probably lacking protein. So you should be looking for something that says strengthening or protein because that's what your hair needs. If your hair is in amazing condition, barely any split ends, super hydrated, very healthy, you just feel like it needs a little shine, you can go for something that says add shine. My hair is brown, it is not black, it doesn't shine that much anyway. Even if I put oil on it, it doesn't look like as shiny as someone with maybe blonde hair or someone with like really black hair, okay? The reason why my hair also doesn't shine as much is because I have dry hair, okay? So if I go for something that says ultra moisturizing, if my hair is super moisturized, it's gonna shine more than getting something that just adds shine, you know? It's more of like an artificial shine. I go for something that will truly make my hair actually healthy. Just look at your hair, touch your hair, figure out what the problem is, and then buy something specifically for what your issue is. The fourth tip is actually amazing because this one goes hand in hand with the third tip. It's either something you can use in conjunction with the third tip or something you can do after you figured out the third tip, meaning after you figured out what your problem is and you have dealt with it, okay? The fourth tip is do not be afraid to use preventative hair products, okay? So I do this a lot because most people with natural hair, if you've been taking care of your hair a lot, you will have less issues with someone who's dealing with some kind of chemical damage or heat damage or possibly color damage. Now, if you are in an amazing state, okay, you barely straighten your hair, you use really good products, your hair is strong, it doesn't have any kind of damage, that does not mean you don't need preventative products, okay? You can look for products that say for breakage, for damaged hair, because you're preventing the process. So for example, I personally love Olaplex. I don't necessarily have damaged hair or damaged bonds, but it helps make my hair fortified so that in case I want to do something like straighten my hair, my hair has already been protected preventatively and then also after I can go back and use that. So right now I've been using the K18 hair product as well. It is a very expensive product. It is sort of similar to Olaplex, but not necessarily. It is something that really targets extremely damaged hair. So it is loved by people who use heat, hair dye, and also relaxers because it really fortifies the hair. But for me, even though I just do occasional silk presses, it is good for me to use a product like that right after to make sure that it helps my hair bounce back quickly. I love Olaplex shampoo, the bond smoother, that is my favorite leave-in of all time. And it really does make the hair feel amazing because almost no one has extremely perfect hair. It's kind of like a working pro progress. The only good thing is because your hair is not damaged or anything, you probably don't have to use it as much as someone who's actually experiencing severe damage or severe breakage. You could just use it like once or twice a month just to make sure that you are preventing any future damage. So I I also like to use products that say prevents split ends or heals split ends. You actually can't heal a split end, but they are products that help it, help make it look better. So what I would do is even if I've just got a fresh trim, I will use products that are targeted at split ends because I want to make sure that I don't get them, which is kind of inevitable, but I like to make sure that my hair looks like I don't have them. So if you are not sure what specific hair product you'd like to go to as a preventative measure, just look for anything that says things like bond building, keratin, protein, split ends, all that kind of stuff, fortifies, nourishing, 
Look for things like that and they will really help you. But again, always go back to tip three. Know what your issue is first, okay? If you're already on protein overload, you're not looking for more keratin. You're looking for nourishing. You're looking for hydrating, okay? So for me, even when my hair is nice and hydrated, I would still gravitate towards something that's more hydrating, maybe with just like a little bit more of a protein balance, something like that. So pay attention and also don't just read the name of the product, look at the ingredients because just because something says bond building and you're like, oh, this must be exactly the same as Olaplex. Look at the ingredients. It might just be a marketing gimmick, okay? So when I say look at the product, I'm talking about the whole thing, including the ingredient list. Okay, number five is actually my favorite tip of all time because it will give you the best results out of any, any hair growth tip out there. And this is actually not a hair product. It is more about your attitude. This is to fall in love with your hair in whatever state it is. Now, I understand, and I dealt with this as well when I just cut my hair and I just went natural. You may not love the stage your hair is at now, but you can definitely love something about it. For example, let's say you absolutely hate short hair. The reason why you have cut your hair or why your hair is currently shorter than you would like is because you are trying to grow it out long and natural and you want it to be healthy and beautiful. But if you absolutely hate it right now, you cannot hate your hair to good health. Just like you can't hate your body to good health, okay? It is the same thing. Find something you like about it. For example, for me, when my hair was really short, I was like, I don't know how to style it. I don't know what to do with it. But there were things that, that I really liked about it. For example, I have very, very thick full hair. And I like that it is super thick. Sometimes it is a pain to do because it's so much and it's so thick. But that is one of the things I liked about it. I liked that my hair was thick and healthy. And I liked the way it felt when I put products on it. So even though I didn't like the current length and I felt like I wasn't comfortable with styling it, I did find something that I liked about it. If you absolutely hate it, whether it is conscious or subconscious, you will do everything you can to just ignore your hair. And this also comes in when you start comparing your hair to other people. Now, if you're always doing the comparing thing and you're thinking like, no, other people just have good genetics and I don't, there's certain things that you're going to be doing even though you don't realize it. For example, if you love your hair and you're thinking, oh my God, my hair is so nice. It's going to look even better when it's longer. I cannot wait till it's like fully healthy. It doesn't matter how long you want your hair to be. You might want it to just be on your shoulders, you might want a bob right here. You might want it to be all the way down to your waist. You want, you might want it to be past your butt, okay? It doesn't matter. Just so you know, I want mine to be like waist length, just above my butt. I feel like that will be the perfect length where it's not too long, where I don't know what to do with it, but it's not too short. Let's say you want to get to waist length, right? And right now your hair is literally just touching your shoulders and you're like, I don't know how long it's going to take take for me to get there. My hair probably won't even grow that fast. My hair has never been that long. I don't know anyone in my family with hair that's that long. So I should probably just give up. But anyway, let's just see how it goes. Let's just see. It will be very easy for you to neglect your hair. Let's say it is your wash day today and you haven't washed your hair for 10 days and you're just like, I mean... It's not like it's doing that amazing anyway. So I'll just leave it. I'll probably do it like next week. You let another, another week go by. Next thing, your hair is breaking and you're like, see, I knew this, this is what always happens. My hair just starts breaking and that's it. So now you're just confirming all the negative things that you have about your hair. And then you will purposely do things so that you can support that story that you've told yourself. Like, see, see, my hair is the same length. It's been one year and my hair is the same. Let's see, I told you my hair doesn't grow, but it's probably because you're already neglecting it. Even if there's like a little bit of breakage, you're like, yeah, my hair probably just does that all the time. But if you love your hair and you do everything to say, I'm going to make sure my hair is going to be healthy. I don't care what has happened in the past. This time I'm going to make it work. The moment you notice you're like, well, I don't think I saw those split ends before. Instead of being like, yeah, see, my hair always has split ends. Your first thought is going to be like, I need to get rid of these split ends right now so that my hair can continue growing healthy, okay? You might be like, oh, my wash day is supposed to be in 10 days, but right now it feels so dry. It has only been four days. I'm going to wash my hair right now, okay? So if you love something, whether you realize it or not, you will focus more attention on it and just the law of attraction, honestly, your hair is going to grow. Appreciate your hair. Love it. When you love something, you respect it. You treat it well. Where focus goes, 
energy flows okay you're here will thank you thank you so much for watching this video if you want more videos like this or if you want to see how i did my makeup follow me on instagram at angie b with three underscores thank you so much for watching watch the two videos on the side of the screen right here hit my face right there to subscribe if you didn't in the beginning thank you so much for watching and give this video a big like because it really helps the algorithm if you did like this video